team fights. I think they actually had a very good chance of taking a map off of L5. Maybe they can just brush those up and show better performances later on as L5 is strong. Still the first in HCC Korea. And we may close the night very soon after the third map. But if Mighty, within that short amount of break, if they were able to give, give some good feedbacks to each other, maybe this wasn't perfect. Maybe we can fix this. Let's try this in our third game and bring it back. They still have a good chance of having this reverse sweep. It's definitely possible. Um, I think I think to throw the term reverse sweep around lightly is a bit is a you know I think we're a bit too soon in that right. But both games they looked good, right? I feel like they absolutely could take this third game, bring us at least to a fourth game. Um, reverse sweep. I don't know about that, but we do finally get to see that Towers of Doom I was looking for all evening. So not going to go into Cursed Hollow, sadly, but. Um, you know, we will see if they can find success here. The Tracer pick did not work in Battlefield of Eternity. We're going to this third one. There's a chance, however, unlikely to see Sans pull out the Medivh that he showed us in the past here. So, one thing to keep at the back of everyone's mind as we go into this draft. In this tournament, he actually has played zero games of Medivh, however. So, that's unfortunate. That uh, I haven't really been able to see that Sans, but even you guys all probably don't believe me. But yep, he was the first Korean player to actually bring out Medib and Gul'dan, Gul'dan into Super League last year. Both on the same day, did not work out. Did not work out so perfectly, but still, he is the one that tried, and he was also in a different team back then. And Towers of Doom, of course, choice coming out from the L5. L5 is most likely to always going to choose the map, as they keep on winning the series, of course. Yeah. So, you know, we talked about how many times L5 gets Malfurion. Malfurion is by so far of a large margin, always a second rotation pick. Yep. And so L5 always ends up with Malfurion because they always have first ban against them. Want to see the insta Tassadar ban. I can't imagine this isn't just going to be the Zarya. And uh, for Mighty, on this map, they're going to take the Zeratul. Okay, I like this pick. They're L5 really likes to play Zeratul, especially on this map, on Tars of Doom. So Mighty, knowing that, just takes that, takes Zeratul out from L5. And this actually gives L5 a lot more room to, they can keep the false stat on Nacho Jin and also just take Malfurion to see what's up with Ma Ma the rest of the draft coming out from Mighty. I like this choice a lot, uh, or that potential choice that you just mentioned. Um, we're really considering other options here. In the past, we would have seen a uh, Varian Ragnaros, um, you know, a lot of the time against the Zeratul or the Malfurion Varian and the Ragnaros later. As Jonga sits back in his chair before <laughs> watching this player cam. Okay, it's going to be the Dahaka Muradin. So leaving Malfurion out of the exchange for the time being, taking the global and the extra pushing power, the strong solo laning power. You know, but people talk about Dahaka as a global, and he absolutely is, but. Even as a solo laner, if he couldn't uh, teleport across the map into brushes, if he couldn't brush talk, he would still be a strong solo laner. Yeah. And I think that's the reason why they favor him here for Towers of Doom. You can always have that bell tower pressure. You win one bell tower, and you can protect that. You often just chain that together to win the game. It's rare, but when you have a hero like Dahaka on your side, perhaps you get that top bell tower. And as they, L5 already chose their strong two tanking lines, Maybe it's to it's a time to change. They already have the global. Maybe Rag will be coming in for Jungha later on. But it's for now. It's Mighty's choice. And L5 already took two tanky at ETC before they can ban it out. I like this choice coming out from Mighty and even False that to really counteract against the Haka. Yeah, False that can definitely help a lot in that regard. And in terms of bans now. It's a tough call. Uh, we've seen Magi play great with Palstad in the past. so It, it would have been an easy ETC ban if it yeah. wasn't taken. Now we might be looking at the... Um, I mean, if you look at other heroes left, it's really going to be uh, Nasong and STE. STE is likely to be playing um, the Tychus or the Liming in this case. But if you ban them, then you'll get them yourself. It's going to be the Malfurion ban instead. Okay, then they're... Either Swoy is going to go Lucio again or just take away Regar when Nasang. And not, not Nasang here. <laughs> Nasang's gone already. So, um, 
It's gonna be the Nova Band, no. Not, not again, Mighty, please. Uh, <laughs> I'm having fun. I think that they could... Well, there's just not a good ban here, to be honest. Like, they could just remove one of the damages they don't want to take. L5 could take Li Ming and Tychus, so they could just remove one of those two to at least stop them from having both. And uh, that would be smart. Anything but the Nova, really. Okay, it is going to be that Li Ming ban. So it seems to be. Like, bans a Gazel. I'm like, oh, come on. Um, Anything. It's not EU. Be come on. Don't go full EU on me, Mighty. So the Li Ming ban will come out. And then this will force L5 to pick up the Tychus, and this will mean that we're oh, I was gonna say this will mean we're probably leaning towards a Vala. I I think I think that Malfurion ban kind of gave Mighty the sense of that they're gonna use Ario with Vala, so I think Mighty went around that corner and just banned out Vala instead. Yeah, I think that's very well said. It will be the Lucio you were talking about, and Leeming comes in because that's the better choice here. And L5, with this composition, it looks standard, looks solid. There's a lack of cleanse, which is somewhat of an issue against ETC specifically, so their early game is going to have to be played a little bit more passively. For Mighty, they still have Tychus available. If they want to just grab a Tychus and a Karzium, for example, that wouldn't be too crazy. It would be a weak draft overall because it doesn't have any super strong points, but it would be a good all-around draft. And SD can play the Tychus really well. Alternatively, they go into a Gul'dan here for the wave clear and his team fight potential with Horrify. So looking at uh, the stats of SDE and uh, Magi. And not Nasa a whole lot of Gul'dan play actually. In fact, five only. And Nasan also favors Regar over lots of other heroes sometimes and hits that Ancestral at the right moment. So. And this map may be the one that we actually see Regar come out. So there's the Tychus, but it is going to be the Karazim instead. It's going to be the Red Feather Hat Karazim, by the way. The best Karazim. Having the Tychus against the solid tanks can melt down the Candy King. Sam's like frustrated on camera. It's definitely been a tough series. They've very well prepared for it. And the drafting, especially in game number two, was impressive. The transition out of the task star pick into the tracer in game one didn't work out for them. Now they have a draft that, again, doesn't have any uh, overlying strengths. Doesn't have the the massive power punch that you look at and go, okay, this strong is this draft is strong because X works with B, you know, X works with Z or whatever. You know, you, you don't have the A B uh, make C work in this draft scenario. It just looks like a strong draft overall, with globals on both sides here. I think L5 uh, has the weakness in that they don't have cleanse here for Lucio. They don't have cleanse, and Sergeant Hammer seems to be okay, but yeah. without cleanse, that might be a tr big trouble coming out for L5. It could be because uh, you know, Sergeant Hammer wants to siege up to do the extra damage. They're going to sacrifice that knowing they don't have cleanse and take Greymane, who could serve similarly to Sergeant Hammer in terms of how much damage he could put on the structures. Uh, if he has protection, he has a little bit more escape than Sergeant Hammer. And uh, we'll have to, of course, get closer into the bell towers to damage them. But solid drafts on either side. No one really won this draft as far as I'm concerned. It's going to be a game that comes down to mechanics, which is always worrisome when you're up against L5. But Mighty did show a great game, number two specifically. And we'll see if they can do this again here and finally take a game in this series. If they don't, L5 is going to close it out 3-0. Blue on their last life. Joker on ETC. Sans on Zeratul. Magi on Falstead. Nasong on Karazim. ST on Tychus. It's mighty. And in red, L5. SCSC on Greymane. Nacho Jin on Leeming. Jungha on Dehaka. Noblesse on Muradin. And Swoy on Lucio. Powers of Doom. It is actually L5's first Greymane on HCC. Korea only. Data. Indeed. And I wonder how Greymane will actually survive when he goes all the way in. That will be pretty tough. I'm guessing the sound barrier will, will cover for the time, but it's not as effective as something like a Sank. 
Materia going in along with Greymane to have that first damage. It's more of a Tempest-esque style. Um, Greymane here just going to be used because he's a solid ranged uh, hero who has good finishing ability on squishy heroes like the uh, Falstad and the Tychus. This is going to be a solo kill on, or not a solo kill, a gank onto Jung Ah. SC coming in though. Should be able to disengage and get the kill with the cocktail. Oh, doesn't even need it. So, going to be a one for one trade. Good rotation up here by SC. A little harassment coming on here for Soy. Will Wall ride his way out. No bless. Actually getting a bit frisky here too. It's not going to be a reverse for him to be able to do. Slight lead, obviously, for L5 because not only did they trade the 1-1, one, one, but they got the extra soak when Greyman went up there. So that's about a um, about a wave of EXP ahead. Uh-oh, SD, super aggressive here. And this is going to be the kill. Swoy's got the lock on. And they can actually heal Noble S up now. It's going to be a double. It looks like there's the boop onto Joker. Sans unable to secure the kill on the Noble S. The reset's coming in. If they can actually keep him revealed here. Look, he's got the lock on. He's going to go down. See you later. Triple kill. And L5 is starting to run away with this game. Oh my, what could have been just one death led into his triple trying to help his team. Sometimes it's actually better to just leave your teammates fall down and try to work on the other lane, soak up some EXP. But Especially against a Lucio like this, you know? He's going to have the ability to help escape and help chase to get the counter kills. I actually like that play from SCSC. He, can't, he saw ETC coming out from the bottom and he took the right path all to the right to survive. Maybe if he kept on going down, could have been caught by that parse slide and could have been a kill. Those kind of small plays make the make the difference at the end. Certainly. This is the mechanics we were talking about, right? When both drafts are really even like this, it's a game that just comes down to uh, mechanics. And the early game strength should be, uh, you would think, the ETC because he has the power slide ability. He has that early game presence. He has the big stuns. Uh, but all it takes is just one positional make mistake from SDE and everything goes wrong. Speaking of mistakes, I'm not entirely sure what happened down here, but it looks like Noblesse was locked up and killed and down with the Candy King. So, mighty keeping this game closer with that pick. A lot of free soak though in the top lane right now for Jung Ah because of the resources committed to go down there and get that kill. So they're gonna have the respawn and the EXP lead. So the question is, was this even worth the resources committed? I don't think so. Not only this uh, ESP lead, but also the pumpkin men camp they're gonna get in the top lane. So very well played by L5. Rotational play they're known for. Yep, those sappers, of course. Hitting, tar hitting structures does a lot of damage, and if it goes all the way to the end, it will also hit the core. Mighty knowing that L5 already took the Haka and Moradin, they couldn't really pick Johan and what a nice play there just to escape. Let's SDE get... wants it, but he's not going to get it. So notice what just happened there. there. With the rotation advantage that L5 had, they killed the Sapper camp that was in the bot lane, while also their Sapper camp crashed in to do the structural damage. They won on both fronts. We had the escape for Jung Ah. And now this neutral one solo bell tower. See if they can wrestle it away. Mighty's looking for it here. The engage is definitely in favor of L5 right now. Magi comes down a bit late. Big hook here on the Joker. He misses the power slide. Jungle's going in. Lots of damage coming out from False Step, but that's not enough. It's just sustained. Without EDC, there's no one to actually tank the damage. And it is SCSC chasing the targets. Yep. And looks like it's going to be a dead car team there eventually. So a three for two. Resets there being the key factor with Nitrogen able to get that Calamity damage off to secure the kill. Uh, we didn't talk about the builds too much here, but we see a more normal Muradin play coming out this time, by the way. We've seen a lot of different variations here as Jung is going to be picked in the top lane. A lot of variations today, but this one's the most standard with the Q build and uh, the momentum talent at four to, for cooldown reduction. Greymane going into the cocktail opening because of the lack of double support, as you mentioned early on. Sans nearly dies to keeps, creeps. That was actually pretty stressful to watch. That almost made me jump out of my seat. <laughs> and Greymane going, not Greymane, Tiger's going into the regular minigun quarterback field. And Lucio actually going for wall riding talents. They'd actually 
could have saved him from the initial danger zone that he had in minute minute two or three. Yeah. And uh, I mean, this is just all as standard as you would expect. As uh, we're gonna see an attempt invade, or it looks like a fake invade for L5 as there's no resources committed from the top here yet. L5 did have a lot more kills, it is 5 to 7. L5 did have two more kills and a lot more core damage done, but in EXP, Mighty is leading at the time and they should be the one that actually wants to engage before L5 hits 10. And that was why I was a little bit worried about L5 poking in at that sapper camp. This is going to be more free EXP for Mighty here. Positioning is important. Now this top lane is going in favor of Mighty. It's always really annoying uh, when you have this bell tower pressure. If they don't deal with that, they're going to lose that. And I can snowball the game, as I mentioned before. Okay. They're going to commit with Sans here onto SC. SC, though, looking to do some damage before he goes down. Does dive back in, using the go for the throat. Will they be able to get the kill on the Sans? Palm ignored. Actually, it looks like the turret can't ignore us. <laughs> Turret cannot ignore. The Turret's on the course. same page with the team here. Come on, Turret. Pretty sure he called out, ignore the palm. <laughs> SD even dropped the laser just to, just, just to secure, the, secure the vision and to keep the enemies away from him. Now, if I even losing Greymane, they just want to stall some time. Turret's not a team player, G Clef. We just learned. No, they're all AI. All right, so. Sorry. Uh oh, Sans really playing with fire there. And you finally see the kill onto SD. That's resets for Nacho Gen. You're gonna get oh. the second one onto Joker. Looking for the stun here on Amagi. He does escape. Mosh pit does cancel. Does get canceled within trying to can during the channeling. So did get that nine second cooldown is back now. But during the team fight, couldn't really do much. So this is really starting to feel really scary for Mighty right now because they have a 16 point deficit to overcome. Luckily for them, they had the lanes pushed so. It was never a direct threat to Bell Towers while the uh, death timers were rolling. We are going to still see the double camp here for L5, which will pressure the bottom Bell Tower, but they have SDE coming down to help relieve some of that pressure. It's not going to be a Bell Tower kill. This could have been worse for them had they not kept their lanes so pushed. As it turns out, the only real issue for them is the slight EXP deficit, but more importantly, the core deficit. Now, as we see, actually, they're going to commit to the neutral camp in top. L5 actually waited all that time until the draft the laser drill finished and then that's the time when Greymane came into the fight exactly and they really turned it around turned that around even if they got they were the one that was manned down with Greymane before okay these pumpkin men are going to try to smash into this uh this bell tower as you can see limiting it down to about half health just below Pumpkin men from the neutral camp at the top. Sapper camp, I should say, to be technically correct. I just love calling them pumpkin men. Going to do the same otherwise. So the bell tower health is about dead even for these two teams. As our observer is zipping around the map right now, trying to catch every little piece of action. So he's going to just go ahead and heal up here. It's going to be a defensive engage for L5. SC is going in. The Void Prison used defensively for Sands. The drill comes down. SC is going to look for the kill as soon as that Void pops. But a great sound barrier coming up here. Yeah, and actually, uh, but the Gust actually, and Moshpit is available. It does catch one, but canceled right off. That wave of force perfectly placed here. Noblesse fairly low. We'll have to heal up a little bit as the Bell Towers to the top do spawn. Good cocktail damage. Looks like L5 is going to try to cut the retreat off here as they move up, but a good power slide does come down. Junga is dead for sure. That's going to be the first kill in this fight. Can they turn this around? SC does have go for the throat. Wants to get the reset. Noblesse was not here this entire time. He's channeling. Just wants to try to finish this game off as soon as possible. It's going to cost them the kill here onto SC, but they get all of the channels up to the top. Oh, Nasong interrupts. They really want this interrupt. Yeah, great dashes. They are two men down. L5 really has to retreat from here. They, it's going to be tough just to even cancel those channelings coming out from Mighty right, right now. Okay, Nacho Gen, if he gets resets, could carry this fight, but he's just so pressured right now from Joker. Can't get in there. Noble S coming up for the big stun. And there's a gust coming in. SDE gets grabbed, and this is actually a fight that could turn for L5. The respawn is good here for Greymane. There's the reset coming in. Another one goes with Nasong going down. Calamity does connect here with Joker. It looks like L5 is going to let this chase go. They're going to get the channel here and the boss. It looks so natural that 
Yeah. They're taking down the boss. It, yeah. It's a natural connection. They were like kiting the boss as they were trying to get the kill on ETC. They're like, yeah. ah, whatever, we get a boss instead. What a play. 3v5 for right right next to that altar, focusing down on one target, both the Haka and Morden. They take the kill of, onto Taikas because they know that's the enemy that they should go for as a tank. Well, this situation is recoverable for Mighty if they don't lose a bell tower. If they lose a bell tower, I feel like the situation becomes a lot different. Luckily for them, they can't get it. Okay, too isolated in this prison. And Mosh Pit just back Dust in time. Well. They have Gust, they don't even need it. It's gonna be the double. Look at the bot lane though. Nitrogen pressuring that uh, bell tower. If they get the bell tower, this is horrible for Mighty. Mighty cannot allow this to happen. They need to rotate down and deal with that very soon. Not a lot of wave clear for Leeming, obviously, so uh, it's going to take a while to knock it down. Noblesse is just trying to delay that. Nitrogen moving up anyways, and that pressure uh, will end to the bot bell tower. Mighty needs to kind of play perfectly from here, though, in order to come back. They're even on EXP, just slightly behind, just slightly. Yeah, with the Void Prison, I feel like Odin could have been a better option to have that burst deal with, along with connecting with Mosh Pit. And Gusto, of course, to disengage. Sans drops another wave onto this. He's not going to commit to the bell tower as he sees Jungha coming up. Always a scary thing to see. It's the triple bell tower spawn here, though. So they have to prevent at least two. They have to get two, or they lose this game on this bell tower phase. Or, excuse me, altar phase. I don't know why I said bell tower. Noblesse is stuck here, caught. Doesn't have enough heals, or does he? No, he does not. No so burst heals can come out from Lucia or from, or from his D. And actually, not Nitrogen looks for a kill onto False that does not connect. Had he gotten one, he could have, with uh, the resets, turned this fight. Bell Tower taken in the top during all of this. They do secure the two they need. And Mighty they could be on their way to a comeback here. Yeah, Mighty knew they had to put a lot of resource into that kill. If not, they could have been already close to being the close to having this game finished. They also got the Bell Tower on top, so yeah, less shots fired. So this will have to be secured or else they cannot get a kill off of just one altar. L5 that is. Now this is the reason why bell tower caps are so strong. If you get one, you can almost always be ahead of one. Because it, well, when the resources are spent to defend the other ones, the top one, that's when you attack another one on the opposite side, This in this case being the bot. So quick rotation now with the global from uh, Jung'a. Could turn this around though. Good dodges here on Nitrogen's orbs. And he's gonna push the top bell tower during all of this. So it ends up being neutral. There's always the threat that Mighty could push that one down um, in a moment's time. So this next phase will require L5 to capture two. Oh, actually, I take it back. They got the bot bell tower during this. I didn't realize it was that close to being destroyed. So never mind. It's going to take one, which is really important. And they're going to have this extra threat of the sappers that could hit the core. And false that just used the flight to yeah. actually go all the way up here. So up there, so has to run for the bottom. This is intense. The music is picking up for it. Yeah, this depends this on depends on how many altars will pop up. It's just one, luckily for Mighty, but they really have, they have to, to stop this. it. They have to stop it. They actually might not even want to worry about these pumpkin men right now and try to sneak somebody over there, get a positional advantage. Yeah, all five just has to stall time here, just not lose anything. Oh, they're not actually, super low. They're actually looking for a boy prison used defensively here. Okay, the jump on into Malgi. He misses the Storm Bolt though. Nasong super low. jong is gonna have to burrow. Getting a pick here would be so huge for Mighty, but it's gonna be Nitrogen who gets the kill. Turns around, gets the double, the triple. It's over. That's it. That's gonna be the end of this series. Nasong fights to live another day, at least keep his KDA up, but it's not gonna happen. Palms himself, but he will go down right afterwards. It's a beautiful palm. That's beautiful, last, yeah. Last seconds, yes. That's Sans a, just trying to delay what he can, but no way. That's how you know you're a commentator now, G Clef, when you say something generic is beautiful. <laughs> yes, even pops that sound barrier just for the extra protection, but the core will go down with this last five shots. GG. GG. The full wipe at the end. Controlling that zone, forcing the rotation down for Mighty with the Sapper cap, and then winning the team fight that ensued. Nacho Den, I feel it was the MVP in this series, especially in that last game.
accurate shots over and over and over again, getting the resets, good calamity usage, good prediction. You see, when you go back and watch this game, you can see a lot of moments where he looked to be shooting uh, or facing in a weird direction when he dropped his uh, combo. But you'd see a power slide come and you're like, oh, okay, you predicted where the, the ETC would be there. He's going to just get the, the massive damage connecting there. And so you're going to go to an interview in a little moment here, I assume, with him. But uh, there's a lot of arguments to be made for jung -Ah as the MVP as well. If it's neither of those, I'm going to have to talk to somebody after this talk. Korean commentator's like, really? 